The nerd voice hurts me. I'm sorry. Oh. Oh, a pineapple. Zara, it's a tragedy. A tragedy? A tragedy, Miss Ham. Is is she okay? Did Honcho's robots somehow get to her? No, not the robots. Rift, Director de la Board, has, her, has had her deported. Oh no. Pineapple, I'm so sorry to hear that. I, I thought she'd be allowed to li come live in HQ. I know the rules don't allow it, but I thought they made it, make an exception for us. I hope you somehow find a way to be with her, Pineapple. At least, she's probably safe in her home world, right? Safer than in f the Thunderdome. Uh, Thunderdome, for certain. I take solace in that, Zara. I love her. I just want to be with her. Sorry, Pineapple. If there's anything I can do, please tell me. I appreciate it, Zara. You're a good friend. Hmm, this... Anything to say to her? You ruined this! <laughs> Oh, and she's she's. This is the one where she says that she hasn't seen a love letter in a long you time. You ruined this. Okay. So are we gonna go to Goo Planet or? Oh, you're gonna talk with. Oh yeah, he has something new to say. How's it going, V? Uh, not so good, Agent Zara. Mister Sterling gave me some forms to fill, and I sent them back. I thought I did okay. But I just got this letter. It says I was rejected. Oh no. I was really excited thinking about having adventures and seeing all the places and meeting the other versions of me. But I think it's my fault for having such high hopes. I should have been more realistic. On the bright side, soon I'll be back home with my sisters. We'll be eating Nada's spaghetti, Kadathi say. She makes the meat sauce with real hu- I mean, I don't know <laughs> if it's polite to talk about that. <laughs> really? Like human meat? Or human, uh... Gee, I expected the Academy to accept you. I'll talk to Dash. See if I can figure out what's going on. And completely overlook the fact that you eat humans. Well, who knows what humans are like on this planet? They might just be flesh sacks. Uh, they grow on, like, weird flesh trees. Mm -hmm. What? He's like a weird ten eldritch tentacle horror. Who knows what it's like over there? I mean, we talked to a sentient pineapple. There's a very real possibility. I, I know. It, possibility it, it, it is that weird that, like... Could you imagine you would have to disavow eating pineapples if you had a friendly pineapple friend? Mm -hmm. Same thing like if um, Roger Rabbit. Like, I don't think I could live in like Toontown and eat meat. I think it would mess with my head. Hello, Zara. How's the case going? It's good. But I want to ask you about something different. If you have a minute. Uh, it's Vorex's application, right? I saw I'd been rejected, as he comes from, uh, Type Delta Earth. Ah. A Type Delta Earth? But I come from a Type Delta Earth. What's the problem with that? Rift usually receives applicants only from Earths with portal opening technology. Earths that know about us. We only recruit people from lower tech Earths if we find an agent with exceptional capabilities. I guess that's why Director Dillaboard vetoed your friend's application. Of course it was Director Dillaboard. I guess I'll go talk to her. Yes, Sinclair. Good afternoon, ma'am. Do you have a moment? I want to talk about... Vix Vrx? The Zugonian. All right, but make it quick. Some of us are busy. Sure. I've heard that his application to enroll in the Rift Academy was rejected because he's from an Earth that hasn't developed interdimensional travel. That is correct. Well, I don't think that's enough of a reason to reject an applicant. His potential as an individual has nothing to do with his dimension's tech. That's true, Sinclair. In an Earth classified as Type Gamma or lower, we scout potential agents based on how promising their skills are. And in the case of this Zugothian, I don't see any reason to consider him to be particularly promising, do you? He might not be the strongest or have any special skills, but he's enthusiastic. I think he deserves a chance. Everyone does. 
And I'm supposed to let every enthusiastic teenager in every dimension enter the academy. Not everyone, but what about those who ask? I listened to what you had to say. Nothing I haven't heard before. Unless you have anything else to add, get back to work. Ah. Hey, Dash. By the look on your face, I take it that the director didn't really listen to your request. Uh, I've managed to get this far without disrespecting any of my superiors, but... Man. Does the director get on my nerves? She just never listens. I get that there are rules for a reason, but sometimes she just... Ah, uh, sorry. I shouldn't complain about that. She's the director, after all. Feel free to talk however you want, Zara. It's just the two of us here. It was... I was an agent for many years. I know how it is when you feel like your superiors aren't listening to you. Thanks, Dash. The Zagothian is important to you, right? Is it because you're, you also came from a type Delta Earth? I... guess it is. In my first year at the, in the, at the Academy, I felt out of place. Most of my classmates were from more advanced Earths. They were just envious of me having been scouted, instead of going through the application process. They made me feel alone. I think it's like that for... Vix. Uh, imagine having to go back home and live your entire life knowing that there are other Earths, but you'll never see any. I know what you mean, Zara. The Academy wasn't easy for me either, coming from a Type Epsilon. Oh! I didn't know you came from a Type Epsilon. That means technology isn't very advanced there, right? That's right. The other cadets didn't make it easy for a guy who hadn't seen a car or a phone before, much less a plane or a computer. Wait, a car or a phone or... Yeah. So he must be, Tr like, pre-1800s. Yeah. Huh. But I didn't let them discourage me. I tried my best and found my own way. At graduation, I was the top of my class. Well, wait. Probably 1800s would still... Fun they didn't make the car until the early 1900s. Yeah. Correct? Uh, late 1800s, I think. It was 1890s? Probably. It was, like, turn of the century. And yeah. Then Ford had his stuff in the 20s, you know, like the Model T and stuff. Yep. That was when they became more commercially available, but trains existed in the 1800s at yes. the very least. Absolutely. Hmm. And you went on to become Rift's best agent. What I mean is, when someone blocks your path, you have to make your own. I'm sure that if Vorex is serious about joining Rift, he can find a way. I think you're right. Thanks for the advice, Dash. Anytime, Zara. So are you just saying Vorix because that's how the other guy pronounced yeah, it? Yeah, and trying to put uh, any kind of weird warps. spin on it. I'm just assuming everybody else isn't as sensitive as she is. Okay, well, I'll just say Vorix too. Because that does sound really cool. It's also pretty close to Varax. I gotta go back to that webcomic. Oh yeah! That was your character. Part of the reason why I'm like, I don't want to go anywhere. I have too many games because I want to actually like start having time for my hobbies again. Because we've been doing life stuff like grocery shopping and your birthday and... Well, it was Christmas, New Year's. Yeah. Then birthday. Life junk, Spider-Man. Okay, so we're done with Thunderdrum. We might as well just zip through this area pretty so we quick. Need the Goo Grotto. So are we just playing this for the night? And we could do what we could do one more level and then switch to Ellie or I don't know. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's kind of one of those where oops. Uh oh. I'm through the portal and in the Gutopian caves. Hey Zara, I'll be filling in for Skip on this mission. Your mission is to locate the source of a strong dimensional anomaly signature we detected in this area. There's a strange slimy object hanging from the ceiling of the cave ahead of me. I'm getting strong readings from it. There's a 92.8% chance that that's the anomaly we're looking for. Collect some of it for further testing. Some of it, huh? <laughs> Easy peasy. Anything else I should know about this area? Rift used to mine a variety of exotic substances from here. 
Though most of them should be innocuous. Emphasis on should. You might find calcified goo blocking your way. Easy identified by its bright red color. There'll be leftover mining equipment that can help you clear it out. Thanks, Sam. By the way, good aim with the portal coordinates. I was afraid I was going to have to explore this whole cave system. I don't know. It's... Oop. And then you're going to have to explore the whole cave system. Looks like you spoke a little bit too soon. What a textbook example of hubris. <sighs> you should say they didn't do a very good job of cleaning up this place, huh? <laughs> oh, don't, Sam. Don't. I do wish that there was more banter to some degree. Mm -hmm. You know, in missions and whatnot. I don't know. Like, I like the characters more than I like the platforming. The platforming isn't bad, but it's like... Oh, fun. You know what I haven't seen much of lately? Full on... Games that focus solely on character development, conversations, acquiring items and clues, investigating environments. Like, everything has been, there's been a real push for mixed genre games. Do you notice that, or mixed playstyle? Yeah. And I suppose that means that there's variety, which then, oh, whoa. This stuff has some bounce to it. Doesn't look like there's anything else here. I'm trying to keep an eye out for platforms and stuff. Mm-hmm. I like the music here. Now that activates a pipe, which oh, it it's got rid the of left the over mining goo. equipment. Yeah. That must be the calcified goo Sam mentioned. I wonder if you can take a goo ball and put it on one of your platforms so you can bounce even higher. Possibly. Ah, there's yeah. a blue goo enemy. There's a blue goo. Whoa! And it is... Oh, and that's the crystal. Gone forever. Whoa! Because you went from a... A further yep. height, you have a. I will admit, bounce. I'm I'm liking this area a little bit more. Mm -hmm. I think it's just one of those where it's like, I. I was uh, never fond of cities. I like natural environments. What's up with this pink stuff? Uh, it's. Oh, it's extra sticky. sticky. Ugh, sticky. She does not look happy about hanging there. Uh, <laughs> yeah, she's got like a. Oh, so you're gonna need to. Yep. She's got kind of like a disgusted look on her face. I really like the mechanics of this one. The bouncing and the No, this crawling. is pretty good. Goo land. I didn't mind Ninja Land, but it wasn't exciting. This is, um... Oh. Oh. They get smaller, but they don't die. Classic slime and goo. Mechanics, right? Yeah. I suppose I'm used to fighting the goo where they disperse into smaller bits of goo that also attack you and they attack you faster than the big lone goo. Wasn't yep. the thing that you need on the left or did you already get it? Yeah, but this is a portal with probably... Oh, okay. Oh, there's a crystal on the far right. There's a gradium in here. How can I get over to it? We are just gonna coat this chamber in goo. Yeah, it looks like you're supposed to climb up the red, jump onto that platform, jump down onto the goo from a greater height, and then you just jump over. Yep. Oh, and look at how the goo forms. It's coming out of some root system. Yep. So the goo really is a product of the mushrooms. There we go. Hmm. Oh, that was I guess I really enough. didn't 
need to coat everything in the red. I pretty much only need a red right right there. Oh well, that's not the end of the world. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, let's see. So we just wanted to go down here. Yeah, wasn't there a purple thing up and on the left? Or no, 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 no that was the previous room. So now you can just use that. There we go. Let's see. But yeah, I, I, I like the idea of more character-focused games. You know, Pyre was a pretty character-focused game. Yeah, even though there were the ball matches. And I, I think, I mean, we've kind of talked about this a little bit with like Under Hero and Wander Song and stuff, where they're games that like are really leaning hard on their, uh, on like character personality and so on and so forth. And I like that. I wish that there were more that just like embraced it that weren't like it's weird if you had asked me like 10 years ago what are your thoughts on visual novels I would have been like eh but isn't a visual novel just a novel or is it a manga uh visual novels are usually uh Visual novels are usually, uh, how do I describe it? Are usually like dating sims and whatnot. Uh, I would say the best like gamified visual novels that we've played so far are like Pyre, for example. Yes, but are they all words or do they have images? They usually have images. So visual is, novels. So why is it? Oh, they do have images? Okay. Yeah. But how are they different from a manga or a comic? Or Choose a your own adventure, novel? usually. Ooh. You know, you might have a couple of choices that matter. Have you? Have you really read any visual novels where there are choices? Fire. No, I'm talking about. I always assume when you say visual novel, it's not a game. It's like something. No, that you're, you're thinking of like light novels and stuff. Light no, novels. I keep getting them mixed up. Yeah, vi you... visual novels are. I hate caves. It's easy to get lost in here. I've got to be careful. Excuse me? You're just going to steal him from the other room? Dang it. Well, that's an that's okay That's probably spot. not enough. Eh, made it. Yep. The thin target, though. Oh, no. Yeah. Maybe just a little bit more good. Let's see. What about Wolf Among Us? Yeah, I. You could probably classify. You could probably classify a lot of uh, did, Telltale did, games as visual novels. Yeah. Honestly. I, I did enjoy them when we played them. It's too bad that all their subject matter was always so dark. Because unhappy. Yeah. Notice how the series they chose were. The Walking Dead, Wolf Among Us, and then I think there was a Game of Thrones one. They did so many. Uh, Batman. Oh, and a Guardians of the Galaxy. Now that one might be um, more humorous, but yeah, it's like they were fun and interesting, but they were also sad. And I never really liked the outcomes for the characters. Even if you did everything correctly, it, the good people always suffered. I just wanted something bright and colorful and beautiful at one point. And it just seemed odd that everything would have to be so dour. Oh. Wait, you never gonna get that the purple crystal? Ah, so that way you can just pop over and then crawl up. Can you do that on sides? Or I thought it was only if you hang. No, no. This red stuff lets you just crawl right up. Let's see. Have we ever experienced Doki Doki Literature Club? Um, uh, heard I've, of it. I've seen a couple of playthroughs of it. I was watching Price play it uh, back when he was playing it or doing a series on it. I also watched like some amount of things. I think part of the issue is, isn't it? It's got some dark subject matter, but it's also well, to some degree based heavily off of dating sims. Well, isn't it a bunch of young girls and stuff? I. I'm not those kind of games never see. The well idea with him. of Doki Doki Literature Club interests me, but the actual execution is so very far. 
It's like if you had, like, some really interesting meta commentary in a Madden game. Like, no matter what you did, I'm still going to be baseline uninterested in... in the media. Uh, whatever it is. So, this used to be a spear mine, right? Correct, Zara. The Rift Research Division con uh, conducted mining operations, sorry. Uh, I feel like I missed something back there. It's possible, but I always forge forward. Like, this game is something that you could 100%, but do you need to? Is the question. Because yeah, all know. those things will really afford you our extra skills, correct? Yeah, no, it's a good point. That sort of thing just um, infects my brain, <laughs> I guess. I know, I know. I, I'm a, a bit of a completionist myself. Ah. Let's kill this guy. Bash off of that. Let's see. Yeah, Fire Emblem became a visual novel strategy game. Yep. Decent ones. I don't like all the waifus, but everybody Once else really again, does. Once again, the plethora of young female characters, many of them scantily clad. Oh. Or... Be mine. Or just some, like, weird bits, like, uh... You know... I'm not actually, like, this little girl that's, like, weirdly in love with you. I'm a thousand-year-old dragon. Yeah, but I look 12, and it's like, oh. I, I don't know. I, I've said this before. I don't like playing games where I feel like I'm playing somebody else's fetish turned into a video game. Mm -hmm. Or, like, cooked into a, uh, uh, cooked into a game that I'm, I'm actually interested in. So there's that Tokyo Mirage Sessions game, which, by all rights, I should have enjoyed, you know, as a decent-ish RPG. Main problem is just, like, it it really lost its identity. It was just a collection of of anime tropes with, like, a sort of Final Fantasy plot. And I was just like, I just... I have trouble with that. Mm -hmm. Stomp looks real funny. Oh, the stomp? Yeah. Yeah, and I'm I'm glad that there are more games that have a female protagonist or the protagonist it doesn't like there's there aren't just a bunch of girls sitting around waiting for the main character to to use them in combat or to speak with them and other I don't know. I, I never liked the the amount of harem games that there were. Yeah, harem stuff bugs me. And I know it's probably a product of the visual novel genre, because dating sim stuff, like you said, usually what happens is someone plays the game with an amount of, well, a number of characters, either like in a in a fantasy realm or a high school or whatever, and you're supposed to interact with all of them and choose the one that you want. But... Uh, I, I never like how that aspect of romance in games is used. a little bit more. I wonder if I can actually use that to fire myself down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but for me, like when you see romance in video games, and this pertains to life as well, you know, a, a partnership between equals. And I always felt that there was something a little bit predatory about uh, like, the video game wooing process for these characters. Because it, it boils down to of, did I, 
Did I say these specific things to her? Or get her these specific items? And do you know what I mean? It's almost like a checklist. I suppose that's why I like the like the built-in relationships that you have with a fully fl uh, developed narrative as opposed to um, as opposed to like involvement with a player made main character. And I love making characters. But I find that uh, in all of the like Bioware-esque RPGs that I've played, I never romance anyone. Nope. Excuse me, we, ro we romanced Jovic by that, accident. That was a complete accident. I suppose I'll tell you guys the story of Jovic. I suppose mild spoilers for Mass Effect 3. So, Wander and I at one point decided to play through Mass Effect 3. Now, I was pretty familiar with Mass Effect 1 and 2. I had never actually played through them myself, but back in college, I was, I, I mean, I'm always really intrigued by the lore of various uh, fictional universes. And Mass Effect caught my eye, but I was in college. And even though I did buy the games, I never actually had the opportunity to play them, but I did watch a lot of cutscenes and read an awful lot about it. Um, so when we graduated and all, I, I I think you just wanted to, to play the game because you had played the first game. Did you play through the second game? Uh, yeah, I'd, I, I've played through every Mass Effect. Okay, so we were going on to the game. third game so that Wander could complete it, and then I was also wanting to watch because it's like, oh, you know, this, and this is, this is when we had started your channel, but we weren't recording everything. This was like within three months of us starting. Right. And I, I had wanted to record it, but you were still in the... I kind of resent YouTube for taking... Uh, well, I was a little bit resentful because it meant that we had to perform every single time we did, did essentially what used to be a leisurely activity together. Honestly, I have more fun recording now, though. No, like, it means that it forces conversation, in a way. <laughs> We're supposed to discuss these things, uh, but I suppose uh, back to Jovic. back to the, the Javik situation. So in Mass Effect Three, you encounter a one Prothean. of the DLC characters is is Javik. Right, but a Prothean, and Protheans, if you're not familiar with the Mass Effect universe, are like the progenitor race. They're the they're the ancient race that had left their technology on a ton of worlds and were very powerful and they had been mysteriously wiped out and occasionally throughout the series you're you run into their tech you run into their temples and stuff you know so they're a great mystery and he happened to be in cryosleep all these centuries and you wake him up and he is the most he's an asshole yeah he's arrogant and uh and very righteous sounding it's because i suppose the protheans also hold themselves in high esteem and all and he has all of these like oh you were but slugs in my day you know your your kind hadn't even evolved pla past you know a primitive state of being that kind of things and those kind of things i mean so yeah and sure he had some insightful things to say but he was, he was worse than, um, I don't want to say like worse. Okay. He was, he was a imagine, dick. imagine Spock if he was, if, if he Spock was mean. If Spock low-key hated you and everyone. Right. Because he was knowledgeable and he would correct you on things and offer his input on occasion, but it always had that edge where he had to insult your intelligence. Uh, so yeah, we didn't really like the guy. He was cool looking. I liked the multiple eyes that he had in the carapace and stuff, but he wasn't at all amicable like the way Garrus or your other companions were. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, Sam? So it turns out that calcified goo we've been cleaning, well, it seems like it was important for the structural integrity of this cavern. Sam? I'd estimate you got about some amount of time left before the whole place explodes. A thousand and forty-four minutes. Really? 
Might have been milliseconds. Oh, milliseconds? Maybe that's it. That's minutes seemed a little long. <laughs> so, in any case, uh, we had, I suppose you had lost your files, so we had just loaded up a file that saved particular characters and didn't romance anyone. Because I personally, my favorite characters in the series are probably Tali and Garrus. And spoilers in a way, if you don't romance either of them, uh, as a female shepherd, if you don't romance Garrett, uh, Garrus, and as male shep, if you don't romance Tali, uh, you, they actually end up together. And it's just like, yes, yes, I love seeing my companions happy. Like if, how often do you see beta couples? I, that's what they're technically called in tropes. How many, how often do you see beta couples form time here. successfully? Aww. I. I was looking for, uh, I was looking for, uh, useful bits. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's starting up again. Yep. So, um, I suppose what I should say is a beta couple is when there's a main character uh -huh. and their love interest, and then there's their companion characters, their, their squad or their teammates, right? In a larger adventuring party. It's when those members of the adventuring party pair up and find love and whatnot. And I think that's rather endearing because, and especially in stories where, say, the main character doesn't have a love interest or something. It's a way for you to make that sort of, I suppose it's a little overdone. Like you, you say that you want to see more stories with uh, people who are older or not the the young people going on their first adventure yeah right maybe people that already have healthy relationships as opposed to falling in love for the first time oh there we go got the ooze which one did i miss yeah one right in the middle where i was like i probably missed something do you read me sam the tremors have stopped, and I'm back at the spot of the dimensional anomaly goo. Perfect. Now you can get a sample of that's uh, of it in a sealed vial. And done. So there's something strange happening. The stuff is moving, as if it was reacting to something. The mysterious goo. It feels unstable. Its shape seems to vary when it's near my rift equipment. It reacts to our tools. That's a fascinating discovery. Report back to HQ and I'll take a look. <laughs> Hopefully it doesn't be turned to some evil mega monster. Skip? The dimensional anomaly reader is beeping. What is it? Skip? Do you read me? Skip? Ah, <sighs> there appears to be some interference. Could it be Rogue Zara again? Nope. Oh no, the masked man and Rogue Zara. You, I finally found you. Sinclair. No, you're that other one, the annoying Zara. That's your nickname now. I'm the real Zara, and today I'll get my revenge. You've been chasing me for weeks now. You know it's okay to give up, right? See you later, kid. No, not again. I was so close this time. So you're not working with him? You. Did Smiling Mask send you to deal with me? You're just a puppet. Are you implying I am the one allied with Suspect X? I thought you were. What? I'm trying to destroy the Smiling Mask and all of Rift with them. You've got your wires crossed. The Smiling Mask is an enemy of Rift. Aren't you supposed to be some kind of detective? Smiling Mask, your suspect X belongs to Rift. But they're certainly not acting on Rick's behalf. Rick's, sorry. On Rift's behalf. Suspect X is trying to destroy us. I can see through your lies. You're just a puppet of Rift. You're all tyrants, trying to decide who can go where and who can't. That's not... 
It's not that simple. And you can't just destroy us for that. Just try and stop me. Don't leave me hanging again. You're so frustrating, Rogue Zara. Back to HQ, I guess. This goo is absolutely fascinating. It seems to react to our dimensional instruments. Is it trying to? Huh, let me check something. Okay, I'll wait here, I guess. Uh... Just as I thought, it looks like with the right tech, you could use this goo to open dimensional rifts. It's brilliant, but it's also extremely dangerous. Hmm. Could that be how Suspect X and their allies... Oh, could be how Suspect X and their allies are traveling between Earths? We might be getting it from here. Well, I'll see if I can find anything else on it. Thanks for the help, Sam. See, I don't think we have too much. Oh yeah, I should probably take a look at this. Damage of heavy attacks. Yeah, so eh. I suppose I'll explain the story when you're platforming around the next level. Yeah, I think we should probably it. just shoot for the end of this game tonight because we can beat it in one, one sitting. You think? Oh yeah, because we have two more two more levels. Well, one more full level and a boss fight in the goo area, and then all of the Rex area. And without mini game hellscape, we should be able to get through like the reptile area pretty quick. I bet it's going to be really combat heavy. Mm -hmm. I think so. 